Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to use Poll Everywhere in your classroom or in your office um, to review what we did in the Learning Academy uh, QR code in Poll Everywhere. So as you can see on the screen, I have my Poll Everywhere uh, website pulled up and I'm going to log in. Um, if you've not created an account yet, you'll need to do that, but we're going to assume that everybody still has their login. So you're going to put your email or your username and then add your password and hit log in. Then from there, um, you're going to see your previous polls, if you have any that are listed, ungrouped, and then your grouped are um, at the bottom. Um, but to, for today, I'm just going to show you uh, how to use that create. So you're going to go ahead and hit create. And from there, uh, just as reviewed the other day, we had multiple options on um, ways to survey our students or multiple choice questions. So today we're going to look at the multiple choice option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then write the question. Um, so what day of the week is Valentine's Day on? So then I will include options down here. Now, if you look, it'll show text, images, URL, or an LA text. So you have options. So if you want to insert an image, uh, you can do that if you just want to put text. So we're going to give multiple options here, Monday, Tuesday. If you want to add multiple options, you just hit that add option button, Wednesday, and we're going to add Thursday. So if you want to have that as one of your questions, um, that is ungrouped or you can put it in a group. So I'm going to go ahead. This is the only question that I want my students to answer. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. And from there, we are going to, it will show the poll. Now, just a refresher, our visual settings will show what we want it to look like if we want columns or bar graphs or um, pie chart or donut chart here, as well as your backgrounds. Um, the big question is, um, how do you, you have to remember to activate it. So how are you going to activate it? Just remember, you're going to use this button right here. A lot of times if, if someone has an issue with students aren't able to respond, it's because they forgot to hit that activation button. So make sure you hit that. Um, if you want to see the results uh, live, um, you can as students enter their information, you can see it live um, or not. So depends on if you want to check that or not what you want to see. Once you're done with the poll and you don't want any other students to respond, that's when you want to lock that poll. So therefore, responses are no longer accepted on the lock poll. So right now we're not showing, re uh, we're showing results, but we have the poll locked so students can see that. So I'm going to unlock it. If I want to use this information, I could also clear it. Now, I'm not one for clearing data. I like to keep that data. But for example, if you want to have a test session or a practice session and then clear the results so that before you use it with anybody, uh, that's typically what I use the clear results for. And then full screen will obviously give your survey to the full screen. So the next thing we're going to uh, look at is how can students respond? How can people respond? Um, you can do it via a website. So if you want to include the URL and copy and paste that, um, which is what we did during our uh, tech presentation the other day, and we copy that into a QR code, which I'll get to in just a minute. You can have your students text so they can respond via the um, link or they can text the message, or you can actually, uh, we're going to put it in the QR code as we did before. So we have um, audience restrictions. So do you want it anonymous? Now, once you do it anonymous, there is no turning back. It is locked. So if you click that, just remember, you can't change that. Um, obviously, for uh, student um, privacy, obviously, you can't figure out, tell them it's anonymous and then decide to change the game on them. That would be unethical. So then response settings. This is one, um, a lot of times it will default just to one time, but many times you may want students to respond multiple times, uh, maybe throughout the class. Or if uh, a student does not have access to a computer or to a smart device, you can have uh, a colleague respond for them. That way their voice is heard in the poll as well. 
Um, do you want them to change their answers or not? And then if you want a custom reply message, which isn't really a big deal there. Um, you can actually create a schedule as to when you want to unlock um, time. So that's another feature for you. For you. Next thing I'm gonna go over is look at the test. So here is, we're gonna test it to see what it looks like. So here it's going to show what it looks like on a smart device for students. And then it will also show uh, what it looks like on the computer if they were using a device. But once again, we have to activate that poll and it just gives you that reminder, activate the poll to respond. So now I'm activated. And the feature that I want to, um, that's message, that's via web, and then this is what it would look like if the students are texting it, okay? Now, when we go to present, this is uh, where we spent most of our time talking about how to make this easier for students and, and to get that data. So here you can present it from the web and you have the link, you use that full screen button. Um, so you can just copy and paste that URL into uh, a new tab or they have it where you can download the presenter app and put that straight into your PowerPoint. However, that may require you to work with IT to change the settings on your computer um, so that that can happen. However, a workaround, which I really like, is using a QR code instead. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the share feature down here because really that's what we wanna do. We wanna share it with our students. So we have the option where we can um, share a link, we can email it, we can tweet it out, or we can post it out on Facebook. So what I like to do is I like to highlight the URL here, and I'm going to hit control C to copy it, just a shortcut for you. And I like to use QR code generator, and that is also a free, um, you don't have to sign up technically, it's a, it's a free site where you will just copy and paste that in. So that is my URL, um, static or dynamic. I always pick static, but um, depending on your need, you can hit create QR code. And this is the QR code that is associated with your survey. So the multiple choice assessment that we just created is right here in the QR code. So what I can do is I can copy and paste, or I like to snip um, if using Adele, or you can use your command features but I like to go over here and hit snipping. I have my snipping tool and I'm gonna create a new one. And now I have my tool here. So from here, I can copy that and I can insert that into a PowerPoint, into a Google slide presentation I can also include that in any visual. If I wanna put it on the bottom of a flyer or anything at all, you just insert that image and your students will be able to access your survey without having to um, text or include that URL. So they, there's three ways now that they can truly respond. They can respond using the URL here, they could text it, or they can use the QR code that you just created using QR code generator. So that is one option that you can copy and paste it in. Now, one feature down here we haven't talked about on the QR code generator is download. You can download it and save it as a JPEG. And I would encourage you if you decide to download it or use a snipping tool, make sure you name that file so you know which survey it's associated with, with Poll Everywhere. And like I said, that will work for any of those polls uh, that you create in Poll Everywhere because each one will have a distinct URL address. If you would rather uh, use a different QR code generator, the other one that I showed during class was QR code uh, stuff. And that is also a free QR code generator. It gives you, oh, don't wanna see that ad Google. And I'm not interested right now. Um, so if we have our QR code stuff, this gives you the type of data information and then once again, I will just copy and paste in. Oops, let me go back and grab that code. So once again, I'm just copying that URL, put it in, and I'm going to hit, you can select it and I can hit enter. Oh, no thanks, we don't need to buy it. 
And then this is our QR code again. 